Good morning, everyone. <coughs> this morning we are going to elaborate five golden nuggets given to us by Dr. Ishikawa. <coughs> These five nuggets are pertaining to the five essential qualities of an influential business leader. An influential business leader. Who is an influential business leader? An influential business leader is the one who has these five qualities etched in their mind, ingrained in their psyche, in their soul. Without having these five golden nuggets of qualities, nobody but nobody can become an influential <coughs> business leader. These are the most important panacea or most efficacious ingredients, most efficacious tool or most precious recipe of leading a company to the higher and the higher crescendo. If you want to keep your company or maintain it at the same level like a status quo, don't do anything. Just be a political leader without having any kind of quality, any kind of essentials, any kind of substance, any kind of, you know, ability, capability, viability, any kind of prowess or guts or grits. And you can become a political leader. You don't need experience. You don't need any kind of insight. You don't need any kind of guts. You don't need any kind of qualification. But when you want to become a business leader, business leader, then all those qualities of leadership of political leaders are all redundant. Those are not qualities. Those are disqualities. Disqualify them. Take any, any leader, Biden, or you can take Modi. They cannot fit as a chairman or president or even general manager in Reliance or any other company. They cannot fit. They are not qualified over there. So when they say that when you cannot do anything, then you do one thing. Give long specification, long lectures. One who can talk, cannot do. One who cannot speak, one who can do. Only specification cannot do anything else. One who can talk, long, long and long talk like politicians should do. They cannot do anything, anything else. There are five different kinds of nuts, golden nuggets that we are going to elaborate one nugget at a time. First of all is communication. Communication, communication, communication is like a salt in the food. Any kind of diet, any kind of meal you cook, you have to have food in it. Communication is everywhere and we talk about communication, we listen and read about communication so often that communication has become a kind of household name, a buzzing world everywhere. But this is true. More we talk doesn't mean the less important it is. But more we talk, the thing becomes more important. Communication. A business leader must be State of the art communicator. His communication skill, communication knack, must be state of the art. He should be able to communicate with anyone, communicate with any subject, communicate upon any kind of chapter, communicate any kind of dispute in the company, communicate any kind of deal, communicate any kind of contract. If he cannot communicate, then he is absolutely dumb, dumber than a dumbest leader. He cannot reach to the apogee of leadership at all. He cannot even become leadership in, in, the, in the first place. He cannot become a leader in the first place. Leadership cannot be achieved by this kind of unsubstantial, empty people, absolutely, positively, no. Point number two is reason. Reason is universal. Students need reason, teachers need reason, parents need reason, businessmen need reason politicians, need reason industrialists, need reason doctors and lawyers and all kinds of profession, professionals. They all need reason. 
Without having vision, you cannot see what are you going to do in the future, how you are going to put your life on which track you are going to move your life. You don't have track. You have only train but no track. <clears throat> Without vision, you don't know where to go and how to go there. Without reason, you don't know which goal, which objective is the best objective for you, and you don't know how to get that. So you have to have a vision for your company, where your company is going, and where it should go, and what should be its trajectory, and what should be its returns and outcomes, what kind of challenges are there, what kind of limitations are there, what are the white swans, and what are the black swans, every single thing you have to Consider, and this will be possible only if you have vision for your future and for your corporate future. Number three, empathy. A kind of good relation, passion, compassion, patience. This kind of qualities are comprised in empathy. You must have this kind of qualities to use with your people. Your <clears throat> horizontal HR or vertical HR, whoever they are, you have to use empathy to make them feel good, to, to make them feel needed. When we are, we, we feel we are needed, if someone says thank you and it says that you've been great help to us and you are our asset of the company, we really feel five inches taller. We even feel 10 inches taller. So everyone would like empathy. So leader must have empathy to make his or her vertical HR or horizontal HR absolutely positively wanted, not neglected, but needed, wanted people. Point number four is accountability. People can trust on you. People can depend upon you. Whatever you are going to say, you are going to do, and whatever you do, you say. You are not a gossip monger. You are not a rumor monger. You are not a lies monger. You are real quality, and you have accountability that even God can trust on you. That whatever God has assigned you, the task, you are definitely going to fulfill that task without any kind of hanky-panky or without any kind of excuses or without any kind of subtext or subterfuge. You are going to do it without any kind of if or but. That kind of accountability must be found in the corporate leader. Point number five. Gratitude. You must express your gratitude, your appreciation, your thanks to everyone who has actually made even the trifle of contribution in the progress of your company. All your HR, or everyone from white collar to fourth category, every worker has some kind of contribution to make in, your, in the progress of your company. Smallest work is also important, and the biggest work also is. Importance is not in the, in the work or size of the work, but importance in the quality of work. Even if you're a swimmer, sorry, sweeper, and if you sweep the floor the best, Gandhiji has said, sweep the floor such a way that when the angels actually descend upon this world, they see the road and they say, hey, some sweeper lives over here. Look at that. Look at the way he has swept the road. So work does not actually has any kind of size, but work has only quality, quality and the quality. Even if you are a sweeper and the quality of your work is the best, you are going to be appreciated. And if you are a chairman and the quality of work is absolutely haphazard, roly-poly, slipshod, or rag tag nobody will appreciate you so that's all about amplification of these five points don't forget like they say in english language use it or lose it choice is yours god bless everyone on this planet bye